Oh 
What a great opportunity we have today to experience God's presence, especially on what we call Resurrection Day. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, seated at God's right hand, where he ever lives to make intercession for us. We want to welcome you, our family and our friends, to this service on Easter morning. And we want to just remind you of a couple of announcements before we open up God's word. Uh, bear in mind that we as church leadership are just so appreciative and we commend you for your generosity and your liberality to continue to sow into the ministry, even though we're not passing a plate, even though we're not pass, passing an offering bucket. Uh, you're still there with your, your tithes and your offerings, and we just commend you to the grace of God for that. Uh, two announcements. Keep in mind that traditionally during this time of quarantine, uh, we are having what is called a Testimony Tuesday uh, on Tuesday night, obviously 6.30. Want to encourage you to tune in for that. Also, Wednesday night, we have a leadership or an elder moment where they'll be bringing you a devotional. And they have, they have been rich. We have been blessed by our leadership and by our people and by the testimony last Tuesday night with Wayne and Melissa. And we just thank God for our elders and our leaders who are sharing from their heart the things of God. And people are buzzing about it. And we're just giving God glory that even during this time, his word can grow and it can multiply in our midst. I want to invite you on this resurrection morning to take your Bibles and turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 28. We'll be looking at a very familiar narrative, uh, familiar to all of us, and seeing what God's Word has to say to us about the resurrection of Jesus. Matthew 28, beginning with verse number 1. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, notice that the day is dawning. It says, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Now I want you to listen in verse number six to these very, very important words. He says, he is not here, for he is risen as he said. Let me reiterate that. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Not where the Lord is lying, present tense, but where the Lord laid, past tense. In verse 7 it says, And go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Verse 8, So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to bring his disciples word. I want to invite you to bow your heads with me in prayer, and as we're praying, let me just remind you that we know from the scriptures that God knows no restraint. The Bible says he can save by many or he can save by few. The emphasis on there is the fact that God knows no restraint. He can save if we're congregated under one roof or if we're gathered and scattered across this region. God knows no restraint. He's almighty. He's omnipresent. He's with you right now. And he's with us right now as we record this. Our God knows no restraint. Father, I ask today that the Easter message 
about the resurrection of Jesus will loom large and grab a hold of us, not just for this hour, but for every day of our Christian life. Lord, may we keep that center. May we keep that where it belongs. Chairman of the board, Christ is risen from the dead. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This morning I want to speak to you on Easter is the answer, which presupposes this. What is the question? I suspect in the hour that we are living in that there are many questions going on in people's hearts and their minds. Questions like, how am I going to survive today? Or how am I going to make it tomorrow? How do I overcome in the present? How do I overcome in the future? Well, the answer to those simple questions is Easter. Easter is the answer. Provided that we don't take Easter and reduce it all the way down to bunnies and babies and bonnets. We need to understand that Easter represents the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That on that third day, he came forth triumphant over death, hell, and the grave. And when we look at it in that context, then Easter is the answer. C.S. Lewis once made this statement that, I believe the sun has risen, not because I see it, but because by it, I can see everything. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning that the sun, S-O-N, has risen. And by the resurrection, we see everything. We see our conversion. We see our salvation, our deliverance, and our future hope. Matthew chapter 28. The day is Sunday. It's early in the morning, the first day of the week. And a group of women gather together for the express purpose of making their way to the tomb where Jesus is buried. Their intention upon arrival is to enter into the tomb and to anoint his body in order to prevent rapid decay and decomposition. As they're walking along, perhaps on a windy trail that leads them to that borrowed tomb, they're talking, they're thinking about what they're going to do once they get there. When all of a sudden it dawns on one of them, what about that stone? What about that huge, heavy stone blocking the entrance? How are we going to move that stone and get in there to fulfill our task? They continue on with their journey. And perhaps as they make the last bend of the trail, they look up at the tomb of Jesus, and to their amazement and astonishment, the stone has been moved away. It's no longer blocking the entrance of that tomb. God has made provision. God has seen to it that that stone has been rolled away and they haven't even seen it. I wonder how many of us are dealing with issues in our life and we're worried about issues that God has already taken care of even though we cannot see it. And when the women arrive on the scene, there is the angel that moved the stone away. He's dressed in pure white. Lightning seems to be flashing from him, which would indicate to us that he has just stepped out of heaven to do the Lord's bidding and to perform the Lord's will by moving that stone away. When the women arrive at the site, they are told not to be afraid. And then some of the most powerful words ever recorded in your Bible are uttered when the angel says, he is not here. He has risen just as he said. Now, I want to submit to you this morning that those words, he is not here. He has risen just as he said, tells us why Easter is the answer. Number one, Easter is the answer to our present problems. Because if Jesus is still buried in that borrowed tomb, that means he's not seated at God's right hand where he ever lives to make intercession for us. And we desperately need Jesus seated at God's right hand. You say, well, why? Because that's the position where he prays for us. You say, well, why do we need him to pray for us? You will recall the narrative in Luke chapter 22, as Jesus was interfacing with Simon, and he said to Simon, hey buddy, the devil wants to separate you from me, just like you would separate chaff from the wheat. But I want you to rest assured, Simon, that I have prayed for you, so that you don't give in or give up. In other words, when you look at that, Simon's answer to an attacking devil was a living Lord that would pray for him. Now, how many of you know today that 
Just as God is no respecter of persons, the devil is neither no respecter of persons. Um, he attacked Simon in the gospel narrative in his present hour, and he's attacking you and I in our present hour. He's attacking us with fear and doubt and unbelief and temptation. And our remedy, our answer to all those present hour attacks from the devil is like Simon of old, we have a living Lord who is now seated at God's right hand where he is praying for us. And I don't know about you, but I got to believe that when Jesus prays, his prayers get answered, that he prays according to the will of God. And he's praying right now for you not mm -hmm. to give in, mm -hmm. not to draw back, not to falter, not to fall, not to fail, but to keep your hand to the plow, looking unto him, the author and finisher of your faith. We can't do that if he's still dead. We can only do that because death, hell, and the grave could not hold him down. He came forth triumphant and is now seated at God's right hand praying for us in light of our present problems. So the resurrection of Jesus, it is the answer to our present problems. Uh, number two, the resurrection of Jesus is also the answer to our, 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 our future fears. Um, if the resurrection of Jesus is the answer to our, pre our present problems based on prayer, the prayers of Jesus, then the resurrection of Jesus is also the answer to our future fears because of the promises of God. I want you to hear what the Word of God says. It says that blessed be the Lord God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Now I want you to think about those words that came out of the mouth of Peter. Peter is saying that because we have been born again, we have been given a lively hope. Mm -hmm. Hope always deals with the future, just like faith deals with the present, now faith is, hope deals with the future. And upon you and I being born again, we have been given a lively hope. And then Peter says, it's all through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because if there is no resurrection of Jesus Christ, none of us could ever get born again. At the cross, Jesus carried our sins. At the resurrection, Jesus conquered our sins. Mm -hmm. And because of that, when we put our faith and trust in that, we become born again and we're given a lively hope. Now, notice that Peter refers to it as a lively hope. Hope is only as lively as its object. We're not hoping in silver. We're not hoping in horses or gold or chariots. Our hope is in the risen, resurrected, overcoming Lord Jesus Christ, and that gives us a lively hope. What that simply means is, is that because Jesus rose from the dead, the day is going to come when you and I are also going to be raised from the dead. He was raised as our first fruits, indicating that the rest is yet to come. It's interesting in the Old Testament that whenever they would go out and gather up the harvest, they would bring the harvest in, then they would take the first fruits of that harvest, and they would wave it as a wave offering before the Lord. Do you understand that when Jesus died on the cross, and then three days later was raised from the dead, and then on that day when he ascended up into heaven, that God took him and, and waved him before all of heaven, indicating that the rest is yet to come. The rest of the harvest is yet to come. Hello out there, you are the rest of the harvest. Sometimes we have a tendency to look at somebody who maybe is on their deathbed. And we'll say things like, well, brother so-and-so has seen their better days. That's not true. That's not true when it comes to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We as God's people, we have not seen our better days. Our better days are yet to come. The day is going to come when Jesus Christ comes back. He can come back because he's not dead. The day is going to come when Jesus Christ comes back and splits those eastern skies, 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then he goes on to say, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. As your pastor, I come to you today with words of comfort. You have not seen your best days. Your best days are yet to come. When corruption will put on incorruption, immortality will put on immortality, and we'll see him, and we'll become like him, because we're going to see him as he is. As he is, he's fully alive, he's fully well, and he's coming back for us. I promise you this, this morning, there is a whole lot more to you than meets the eye. There's a whole lot more to you than what you're going through right now. The Bible says if we have hope only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. Inferring the fact that our hope goes beyond this life because it's placed in a risen, resurrected, living, loving Lord. That's why Easter is the answer. It's the answer to our present problems based on the prayers currently of Jesus on our behalf. And it's also the answer to our future fears based on the promises of God that corruption is going to put on incorruption and mortality is going to put on immortality. Grab onto this hope. This is no ordinary hope. This is a lively hope that God has reserved for people who are filled with grace and power and life. Jesus Christ is alive. I don't know who you are that's listening to me right now. You may know of a surety that Christ lives in your heart, or you may be one of those who it's iffy. You don't recall a time when Jesus Christ is coming to your heart as your personal Lord and Savior. And right now where you're at, the Holy Spirit woos you. The same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead, Romans 8:11, is now wooing you and drawing you and coercing you to come into the family of God. And right where you're at, you can do that. You can ask the Lord to come into your heart as your Lord and Savior. You can invite him in, realizing that that doesn't end it, that begins it. And then you follow him in obedience. Uh, you repent, you turn from the things that have separated you from your God. That's called repentance. It means to turn away and walk in a different direction. And why not? Because there is a living Lord whose arms are outstretched, ready to receive you unto himself. Our Lord is risen. We should rejoice, and as the scripture said, be quick to go tell others about it. Easter is the answer. Would you pray with me? Father, I pray today that we'll do something with this, this event, the most important event in Christendom that we'll receive it by faith, we'll allow it to change our lives, we'll allow it to encourage us as a hope that is yet to be had. I ask you to help people who are sullen and sunken and depressed and dismal and dark, find them and may the empty tomb be a, a source and a picture of encouragement to them to continue on, I pray. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. for all.
to him who is our peace. His final breath upon the cross is now alive in me. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. The tomb where soldiers watched in pain was borrowed for Body there.